kind of yearn for the calm, peaceful, orderly, prosperous, America first, around the globe days of Donald Trump. Just saying. That's my riff. Just saying, Pete Hegseth. <laughs> nice to see you here. Nice to see you. You're a prince to come on. Uh, let's go through some of these stories. Some of you are going to know much better than I am. Uh, first of all, the tragic death of this young woman. She's a beautiful young mm -hmm. woman. I've watched it. And where is the fiancé? He's on the lam or what? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question. We've been following this from beginning to end on Fox and & Friends. And, and the question is, when did he get to his parents' house? Why, when he left, did the parents not notify the FBI? Why was law enforcement not, didn't find a reason to get in there earlier to potentially identify evidence whereabouts of, of, of where she might be? Mm. Uh, now we have no idea where he is. Mm. Now, he may not even be alive. We're not sure. But, but this, there's just so many unanswered questions in this case. It captured the imagination of Americans because they portrayed such a positive view on social media. This was the dream trip yeah. of a lifetime. They were, he was the fiance. Turns out it was obviously not the case. And America's fixated on, we've, we think we know where she is. And unfortunately, um, she may have, she looks like she was killed. Where is he? And uh, what happened? That's the question everyone wants. Is he still in the... Grand Tetons National Park? Is no, he's possible? back in... Well, I guess it could be. I mean, people are speculating, did he ever even go to his parents' house? Mm -hmm. That's the... In but Florida. The, but the parents have said, is what's being reported, that he went on a walk on Tuesday. And when he went on that walk, he left his Mustang there at the park. And it, that's where they're searching for him now. The parents went back again on Wednesday, recovered the Mustang, brought it back. But it wasn't until Friday that they reported the boyfriend of the fiancé missing. Uh. So much time when there's so much right. speculation about this. That's why uh, we're just unfortunately going to have to wait and see for an autopsy and a lot of other aspects. All right. We'll wait to hear the news. Here's the other one. This 16,000 Haitians under the Del Rio Bridge in Texas. Now, Unbelievable. Look, I don't understand, and I've not seen any satisfactory explanations, even by, even by Biden critics and so forth. Um, how did they get here? Why all of a sudden? Okay, so I'm leaning back. We cover the news. Um, immigration and, and the Biden problems and uh, wouldn't build the wall. We've covered all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I turn my attention for about two days to taxes and spending and reconciliation, and then I get whiplash as I see, what? 15,000 Haitians yeah. under this bridge in Texas. It's like Immaculate Conception. Where did they come from? Living, what are they doing there? A, uh, that's the key question. Uh, the best piece of evidence I've seen was presented by uh, Ted Cruz. He said that on September 8th, word went out amongst Haitians that deportation flights were stopping. So there were about 1,000 people under the bridge come uh, on or around September 8th. And in, with modern technology and modern information, Pick up the phone, text, email your fellow and other family members, not all of which are in Haiti, many of which are already in Mexico, already in Central America, and the flood was on. And that coupled that with the confusion of what Biden's policy has been at the border the entire to time. Welcome, to welcome them. Come to, on. It, from day one. From day one. But then they go down to the, the you know, Northern Triangle companies, countries and say, don't come. But that's contrary to every other piece of evidence that anyone's ever seen. Of course, it's the red carpet. So you've got an overall red carpet of an open border. And then information that spread quickly amongst those communities that led to a, a rush for the border. And why would they think otherwise? They get to our border. They cross. They've been put in this. I mean, what are they calling this? This is, it looks like, I, I think we should call it Bidenville. <laughs> uh, imagine what they would be <laughs> right I like that imagine Biden what they would bill. be saying if that was Donald Trump so I'm reading imagine. also that the local authorities the Texas authorities they're not getting any help from Washington so far as I can tell but the local authorities are putting up cars automobiles trucks as a barrier to entering which leads me to ask you why didn't this famous infrastructure bill that Washington is <laughs> obsessing over have the wall in it, completing the wall? Then we wouldn't need trucks and F-150s and whatever cars to block this out. And the Bidens opposed all of this every step of the way. They did. Larry, I think you're missing the bigger part of the story, though. You know where all the TV cameras have been over the weekend and also where all the National Guard troops have been and also where there is a wall. On Capitol Hill. <laughs> all the cameras, all the troops, all the wall. Because walls work when Nancy Pelosi oh, wants her foot for it. What, they were worried about this rally people. where there ended up being more press right. than there were people. Right. Oh, so they know troops work. They know borders work. Their policy has been they want it open, Larry. And that's the, all they don't want 
are the video cameras. That's why they tried to ban Fox's drones temporarily. They don't want the press, but they want the policy. So if Their you policy can't is see future it, voters. if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Exactly That's right. part of the big lie stuff that these guys like to pull. Mm -hmm. I'm very difficult on this point. So our pal Peter Ducey in the press room asks Madam Saki, <laughs> that's the policy for people who fly into the country. So if somebody walks into the country, Somebody walks into the country right across the river. Does somebody ask them to see their vaccination card? Because she had said that Europeans coming over have to show a vaccination yes. card if they fly in. So Peter Ducey wants to know, if you walk in, do you have a vaccination card? And then she says, let me explain to you how this is going to work. As the individuals come across the border, they're both, they are assessed for whether they have any symptoms. Now, come on. Mm. There's 15,000 Haitians. The ranks of ICE and Customs and DHS have been de decimated down there with a decline in the, in the budget. And we seriously are going to believe that we're going to assess 15,000 people for whether they have the virus or not? I find that hard to believe. Indeed, I find that impossible to believe. It's another lie. Because it is impossible to believe. Because we know, look, look inside that camp. Look at all the COVID protocols being followed there that this administration says we follow everywhere else. So if you fly in from Europe, you got to show your vaccination card. If you hop the border or you live in that in that uh, Bidenville in Del Rio, Texas, those rules don't apply. But we've got to put a mask on a two year old in school or in the streets of New York City. This is why people are skeptical of the so-called experts telling them how they ought to live their life at every level, because the inconsistencies are rampant. The hypocrisy is rampant. The confusion is rampant. And it kind of feels like they don't mind it that way, because it's the, it's the elite class who get to abide by their own set of rules. The rest of us are left trying to figure out whether our kid, in, as a five-year-old in kindergarten, has to wear a mask right. all day long uh, when there's no science to back up that they should. And switching gears again to another catastrophe, and that is Afghanistan. You were in Afghanistan. Yep. Yes, of course. Um, bless you for that, of course. So I'm hearing through the grapevine in Washington that General Milley, uh, and I don't know to this day what possessed him to call this Chinese General Lee and say, we'll let you know if we're going to bomb or anything. I think that was a gigantic mistake. I know Milley, Pete. I really respected him. He has a great war record, but he's had a rough eight months. That's for darn sure. Now, people are saying the Biden team will fire him, and essentially he will be blamed for the entire Afghanistan mess. Does that make, make any sense to well, you? Well, I wouldn't mind seeing Milley fired. I mean, we need less woke generals. Uh, we need... He also came out and said that that strike was a righteous strike. Yes. And when we now know the CIA had, CIA had additional footage almost in real time of the fact that showed children on the target, yes. uh, but they weren't able to stop the Hellfire missile from firing quick enough. So so if, if that many hours and days later you're still calling it a righteous strike, are you really being honest about it? Uh, and then not to mention what's happened in Afghanistan and how it's unfolded. Milley needs to go. Someone needs to be held accountable, whether it's McKenzie uh, at, at CENTCOM, whether it's Milley. But Milley's been a part of so many of the terrible decisions and then smugly dismissed them off. Uh, that that would be a good change, but it doesn't change the Biden policies or what they're doing to right. the military, which is trying to undo uh, what the Trump administration did. And finally, you're a stock market investor. Mm, I'm, mm. I'm more of a crypto guy. Oh, crypto. <laughs> how did, I don't know how crypto did that. I should have checked it. Not well. Stocks, Not well. stocks were down almost a thousand. Stocks are down about 2,000 points in the last couple of weeks. Not the end of the earth. You have to tell me why. Well, I think part of it is this China property company going mm -hmm. under, which, which could have reverberations throughout the financial system. I don't think so, but, but could. I think the other part of it is people out there, there's 125 million investors, they're looking at their taxes going way up across the board. They're looking at more federal spending with inflation way up across the board. And in general, I think investors don't like any of the things we've been talking about hmm. this afternoon. I mean, there's a sense of unease descending and there's no clarity, there's no forcefulness, there's no urgency. If there's That's one thing, think. one thing you've taught me is that uh, markets like predictability. They do, whether it's good or bad. They they, they want to know, uh, and ultimately in this particular. And then you've got you mentioned it, you alluded to it, the 3.5 trillion dollar package. Yeah. That's the gold standard. Of what the Democrats really want. Forget about the border. Forget about Afghanistan. Even forget about COVID. They're obsessed with fundamentally transforming our economy mm -hmm. and taxing rich people in order to do it, even though the numbers. So never no one added. works. So we have welfare, right. but not workfare. I mean, I, people, you know, they all jumping down the, the Twitter to comes after me, the left-wing bloggers come after me. But I'll tell you this, one thing Donald Trump knew, it's better to be feared than loved <laughs> overseas, okay? Mm -hmm. He knew that. And here at home, performance matters. 
We had an economy that was growing and the middle class was growing faster than the rich classes, if you will. That was a good time for the middle class. We don't have that right now. You can't find me one part of the American experience right now that is better off for average taxpaying, God fearing people in mm. this country. Boom. And when that when that sinks in, markets become key indicators. And I think I think you're on to something. It's something to worry about. Pete Hexeth, terrific stuff. Thank you, sir. And by the fire, you can catch Pete all this week on Fox News Primetime at seven PM on Fox News Channel. Thank, Thank you, sir. amigo. Thank Appreciate you. it.